So it is a pleasure to be talking to you today. Yeah, you too, Elliot. So my, my first question that I have is a two-part question. So first, what inspired you to write and direct Snatched? And what was your favorite part from it to, to shoot? Okay. Uh, so I was inspired back in May. Uh, it, it, um, I was, you know, the don't say gay bill was happening in the spring. I don't know if you remember that time when that was sort of all over the news and I, you know, I do recall. You do recall. Okay. So, you know, I, I was reading the news, a bunch of corporate leaders and, and, and political leaders were sort of putting out statements, uh, about the don't say gay bill and, and sort of saying how much they love and, and, try to protect their LGBTQ plus employees while, you know, simultaneously financing uh, politicians and groups that were supporting the Don't Say Gay Bill. Um, and there was a disconnect there, right? And and some of these statements were so kind of hollow in their virtue signaling that I couldn't help but laugh. Um, and I turned to my partner and I said, gosh, wouldn't it be funny if a kid came out as gay in a horror movie to his parents, but the horror is that they were over enthusiastic about it. <laughs> if we swung the pendulum the other way. Um, and then that sort of led me to riff off of that idea of, you know, how many different sort of horror tropes can we subvert, um, uh, both in images or in storytelling. Um, you know, it's it's nice to have uh, the black boy in a hoodie not be a threat as uh, perhaps initially perceived, but as the hero, or to have uh, a queer character actually not be the wisecracking, you know, sidekick, but actually, uh, funny enough, the straight man. Um, and yeah, just sort of pour it out of me, which I, I have to be honest, does not happen often. Um, <laughs> but it sort of let me know that the idea was clear enough, that the allegory I was going for was clear enough, that it, it just sort of flowed out, which was a, a great feeling. Um, in terms of filming, I mean, Gosh, it was all so fun. Uh, the kitchen scene was obviously super fun <laughs> with Tatiana, Brendan, and Misha because they were just playing and ad-libbing. And gosh, there are so many takes of like Tatiana turning around and she would like turn her body <laughs> and her head like a robot alien. And it was actually so funny that we couldn't use it because I couldn't have everything she did in the film be so funny. You, you, you gotta <laughs> rein it in a little bit. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I wish, but like I needed some peaks and valleys, um, but she, gosh, she is so funny. Um, uh, so that was super fun to film. And then the the street scene at the end with um, all of the neighbors was amazing. Um, uh, Melora and Melanie Green are these incredible activists in San Francisco who play uh, Miles' mom in the Alien Double. My friend Jenna Johnson is the blonde mom at the end. And then one of the many Easter eggs is that the grandparents are played by Sid and Nancy Holt Gannis, um, who were also consulting producers on the film. Sid uh, it was the president of the Motion Picture Academy for many years. He ran Paramount, cool. he, ran, he ran Lucasfilm. Uh, he's a real legend to me. And to have him on set, um, having made so many of these major features before star wars i mean you know to have him playing in our sandbox and you know behind my shoulder looking at the monitor was like the the greatest blessing in the world and such a thrill because he knows this medium better than anyone and to mm -hmm. see him having fun was just the best very very cool so so obviously you brought up tatiana maslani obviously yeah. like the the very big big name star of this and is now being seen by everybody in the mcu as she hulk yeah so i have to ask have you been watching she hulk uh Avi, uh <laughs> yeah um i she hulk was actually one of my favorites as a kid funny enough because it felt inherently the visual of her was inherently kind of campy the way they would sort of have her in the early 80s and those like purple jumpsuits um and i think what they've done with that character is really interesting and um and challenges viewers uh, of all stars and stripes in in different ways which i admire and i also just think it's fun it's like after so many stories of you know, tortured men in the MCU, which I love, but at the same time, like I'm always hungry for new stories and new perspectives. I think to have this sort of Ally McBeal like legal comedy <laughs> gauze over the proceedings is original and fun. And I think 
Tatiana knocks it out of the park. Absolutely. So you've directed a variety of different projects from short films to music videos. Yeah. Is there a big difference between directing the two or are there more similarities that then people might realize? Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. I think it also depends on the director. For me, I think I'm inherently musical as a director. I grew up doing musical theater, so... Um, Same. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, awesome. Uh, you know, wh when you grow up doing musicals, there there is an in inherent pattern and tempo and rhythm that you become accustomed to, not just for the musical sequences, but also the comedy sequences. If you, you know, look at the rat-a-tat of Guys and Dolls or, or the Music Man or any of that sort of stuff, there's a tempo inherent. And so when you watch Snatched, there are sort of musical moments to me. To me, it sort of almost plays like a musical in the sense that um, there are things that are timed when Brendan and Tat raise their arms at the end, they raise it in <laughs> unison and it hits the music. That's all very deliberate. Um, and, you know, I bring that to obviously music videos as well. So I think, um, you know, as someone, also horror, horror and comedy are inherently musical, right? They, they're both about anticipation. Yeah. Um, and about a change up of tempo. Um, and so horror and comedy are super fun to play with, to play in for me. And, you know, one day I'd love to direct a musical movie. Um, you know, my dream is to do a, a remake of Tommy um, or Carousel or, or a new musical film. Um, uh, so, yeah, they're, they're quite similar to me. Very cool. And I definitely agree about Music Man having having done that show twice. <laughs> yeah. Who did you play? Uh, I was in the quartet both times. Oh, nice. So, awesome. Yeah, I did it when I was 13, and it's like left such an imprint on me. Yeah, it was it was fun. So so obviously Snatched is part of the, the Bite Size Halloween uh, collection on, on Hulu. So, yeah. I so I wanted to ask you, what are some of your favorite Halloween movies that you like, like go to and like watch every year? Um, you know, the ones I... <laughs> It, I, I like watching new things. I'm not. Uh, I'm not typically a repeat viewer or binge viewer. That being said, I do watch the Scream movies over and over and over again. Um, you know, when that came out in '96, it like rocked my world. Immediately had the poster over my bed. Um, so I'm a huge fan of the Scream movies, and um, The Shining had a huge impact on me as a kid. So to to have the little nod in this film, uh, both the sort of terror of the villain being your own parent, I think is, yeah. is a particularly scary thing for anyone to watch. Um, and it felt appropriate to sort of hat tip to that in this. Um, you know, in recent years, I love Jordan Peele, love Ari Aster. I, uh, Midsummer, I thought as like daylight horror, just like Snatch takes place during the daytime most of yeah. it. I think to create something unsettling in daytime and not rely on shadows and darkness um, is both a good challenge and also necessary because there's plenty of scares in the daytime too. Um, and then Get Out and Us. I think Us is actually quite underrated. Um, a lot of people talk about Get Out. I loved Us as well. Um, and I think what Jordan Peele has sort of, you know, led the charge of this new frontier of social horror and and really using that medium to engage people in cultural conversations, which, uh, you know, I share that sentiment as well. Very nice. And since you brought up Jordan Peele, obviously, Nope uh, came out this year as well. Right. So so what are some of your favorite uh, movies and and shows from this year that, that you've been watching? From this year? Um, what I, um, I did see Nope, which I thought was so, um, grand, um, and the cinematography was amazing. Um, I haven't seen Smile yet. I really need to see that. I actually, <laughs> um, what did we do last week? I showed my partner The Babadook and It Follows, which I know is not this year, but he hadn't seen either of those movies. Um, and those have really stayed with me of all the sort of recent um, crop of movies, I'd say, from the last 10 years. Um, have you seen both of them? Uh, I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've seen It Follows, but I don't think I've seen... Oh, you've uh, got to see The Babadook. I'm, I'm, oh. still, I'm still kind of like slowly, slowly getting myself into watching more horror. It's kind of been the, 
the genre that like I've kind of like avoided for most of my life. So I'm I'm like slowly, slowly getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, well, and also the, what do you love most? You like sci-fi or fantasy? Like uh, sci-fi fantasy definitely would, would probably be my go-to. Yeah, because I think there's a, a great intersection now of these genres, right? Obviously, Snatched is horror, sci-fi, queer cinema, comedy. <laughs> um, and that's fun for me, right? To just sort of play in all these different sandboxes. Um, but, you know, Nope is like a sci-fi film that has, you know, little horror elements in it. I think it was, obviously- it was, basically, it was basically Jaws, but with a with an alien. Totally. And, and, I, and to <laughs> Which me- Which I loved. Right. I don't think horror needs to be monsters and masks all the time. I think there there's many different types of horrors um, and you can find horrors in a lot of different places. And so I think that that's what's cool about the medium is I think historically people I know who say, oh, I don't watch horror. They're thinking of Freddy and Jason and, you know, that's one aspect of horror slasher 80s slasher genre but there's so much more yeah. um you know and hitchcock is huge for me i mean you know we've got a, some little vertigo references and such in, in rear window in our film too um i love um those sort of classic psychological horror stories because they sort of burrow into your brain and stay there yeah yeah definitely so any any like big TV shows that you've been watching. I know we we talked about She Hulk already, but any other any what other? Have I been, what have I been watching? I I've been watching uh, New Game of Thrones, um, which I think is really. I actually hadn't watched the original Game of Thrones. Um, oh, really? So it's been interesting, even though I knew all the characters and knew all the storytelling. Um, so it's been fun to dive into this. You know, so I grew up doing a lot of Shakespeare as well. It feels very Shakespearean, Greek tragedy like. Um, yeah. I, you know, in terms of comedy, uh, two of my favorite shows of the last year are The Other Two, uh, which um, is now on HBO Max. It was on Comedy Central. Chris Kelly um, and Sarah Schneider created that. It's, I just laugh myself silly. So much so that I wrote a spec script for it earlier this year because I love it so much. I uh, <laughs> loved White Lotus. I think White Lotus, you know, it's funny. It sort of goes to what we said before. White Lotus is a comedy, right? Uh, and a satire. And yet there's actual moments of horror in that too. I think, I think comedy, I think things can be so horrifying that they're funny. That it's sort of <laughs> your, your, your unprovoked reaction is to laugh from death discomfort or from yeah. horror um and i think it's a pretty fine line so i tend to like films that um scare me and make me laugh in equal measure plus we can't go wrong with more jennifer coolidge oh my gosh come on national <laughs> treasure so singular which is what i love about her like there's no one there's no one else you can think of that's like her um, yeah yeah she is so talented. <laughs> um I think that's I think that's pretty much all I have. Cool. Well, it was great talking to you, Elliot. It was nice talking to you too. I, I definitely enjoyed Snatched, and I hope that that people people check it out on Hulu. Me too. Thanks, Elliot. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.